Hello, this is lecture number four in our series of uh, geometrical and physics optics lectures. This lecture is somewhat unique in the sense that we're not going to be presenting a new material, but rather taking a step back and looking at an important concept that's been already covered in the previous two lectures, and that is a ray tracing method. So we are going to do the review of the material covered that pertains to the ray tracing method, both for the mirrors and the lenses, the reason why we are doing this is because this is one of the most complex topics uh, in this class and we definitely would want to emphasize some of the most important step-by-step -step procedures that need to be followed in order to properly solve certain problems that relate to the image formation in mirrors and lenses. As already mentioned, we are going to be analyzing both the mirrors and lenses. We're going to have a few interesting cases in which we are going to be analyzing how the images are being formed by a mirror or a lens. Our first case that you can see on this slide is a case of a concave mirror. Now keep in mind that the assumption is that light is propagating from the left to the right. In other words, our original is always going to be positioned on the left hand side relative to the optical component. So in this case here we have a concave mirror. We can see that the center of the mirror is positioned farther away from the left hand side as opposed to the edge of this mirror and we said that mirror is basically separating the entire environment into the real environment that's on the left and the virtual environment on the right we see here an original of this lady and we would want to see where the image is going to be formed by this mirror uh, of this original object there's a few important elements that we need to consider when we are analyzing these cases. One is the position of the focal point, and one is the position of the center of the curvature of the mirror. As you can see here, the focal point is positioned halfway between the mirror and the center of the curvature, or we could have also introduced the vertex, which would be the point that's uh, positioned exactly at the center of this mirror. So the way how we're gonna be analyzing this mirror is by introducing three light rays. The first light ray that we are looking at here is a light ray that propagates along the line that's parallel to the optical axis. So this dotted line here that is running perpendicular to the center of the mirror is so-called optical axis. And then we also constructed our first light ray that's shown here in green uh, in a direction that is parallel uh, to the optical axis. When this light ray hits the mirror, it is going to get reflected according to the law of reflection. And we know that the rule we established is that the light ray, incident light ray that moves parallel to the optical axis is going to get reflected through the focal point. So this blue, uh, blue light ray that you can see here is a reflected light ray that's created after the incident light ray that moved parallel to the optical axis hit the mirror. The second case is the case of the incident light ray that's passing through the focal point. So this is our uh, second light ray. And when this uh, light ray hits the mirror, it's going to also get reflected according to the law of reflection. And we know that the second rule we established for the case of mirrors is that this light ray that is passing through the focal point is going to get reflected parallel to the optical axis. So here we have uh, two light rays that uh, we analyzed. The first one, again, propagating parallel to the optical axis is reflecting through the focal point. And then the light ray that's passing through the focal point is going to get reflected along the line parallel to the optical axis. And then finally, the third case is a case of a light ray that's passing to the center of the curvature. So this is our third light ray. We can see that this light ray is passing to the center of the curvature. And the third rule we established for the light ray that's passing to the center of the curvature is that it's going to get reflected along the same line. In other words, it's going to move again back uh, to the center of the curvature. This way we constructed three light rays. And next step is to look at where these three light rays that are shown here in blue, reflected light rays, where they are intersecting. So they're intersecting exactly at this point here, and that is going to be the point at which uh, our uh, mirror image is going to get uh, located. And you can see here the mirror image of uh, the lady. 
that's being positioned exactly where the three reflected light rays shown in blue are intersecting. So we can further analyze this. Number one, we see that the mirror image appeared to the left relative to the mirror, which means that this image is real. We also see that this image is below the optical axis, so it is on the opposite side relative to the original. That's why we say that this mirror image is inverted. And finally, we can also observe that this mirror image is smaller than original. So this is how a ray tracing method is applied to the case of a concave mirror and original that's positioned to the left relative to the center of the curvature of this mirror. We can also solve this problem using analytical approach. So we are going to start with the, the mirror formula shown here in a box. Two pieces of information that we are going to assume are given are the focal length of two and then the distance of the uh, original from the uh, mirror as being eight. We can see here that the distance P of the original uh, to the mirror is uh, larger than a double length of the double focal length. Uh, the, if we take the twice the focal length, we're going to get the radius of the curvature and we can see that radius of the curvature in such a case would be equal to four and then this original is at the distance eight, which means that it's positioned to the left relative to the center of the curvature. A few things to uh, be careful about is the sign convention. So we defined uh, for the case of a concave mirror for the focal length to be positive. And then also we said that if the original is positioned to the left relative to the mirror, we are talking about the positive uh, distance. So that's why we are taking P as a plus eight. And then we are going to substitute these two values for in our uh, mirror formula. The substitution is uh, done here. You can uh, divide one by eight to get plus 0.125. Then one half is equal to 0.5. From here, we can extract one over Q as 0.5 minus 0.125 to come up with the value of uh, 0.375. And then we can take reciprocal value uh, to come up with the Q as 1 over plus 0.375 or Q being equal plus 2.667. We can further calculate the magnification for this case. So here's the formula for the magnification. We would assume that the height of the original is equal to plus 2 and then if we uh, substitute for the P and Q in our magnification formula we have for Q plus 2.667 and then for P, we have plus 8. So if we do this division, we come up with a value of uh, magnification of negative 0.33. And from this same formula, we can also calculate the height of the uh, image as being minus 0.667. This value that we are seeing here also has a certain meaning. So the fact that Q is positive means that the object is real, which correlates to the results we got through the ray tracing method since our mirror image is positioned to the left relative to the mirror. So the positive Q means a real image. And then if you look at the magnification, you can see that the magnification is negative, which means that the object is inverted it's positioned on the opposite side relative to the optical axis, which also is a confirmation of our solution through the ray tracing method. And then finally, you can also see that the magnification is less than one, which means that the mirror image is smaller than the original. So those are important conclusions that you can draw from uh, both the analytical approach as well as the graphical method that's shown on the left hand side of this slide. Let's now look at the case number two. We are still looking at the same type of a concave mirror with the same focal length. Uh, but right now the difference is that the original or the object is positioned between the center of the curvature and the focal point. So still on the left side relative to the mirror, we have a real portion of the environment. And then behind the mirror is the virtual environment. And we also have the same focal length as in the previous case. So again, we're going to be analyzing three distinct light ray cases. The first one being the one that is moving along the line that's par parallel uh, to the optical axis. This light ray, when it hits the mirror, 
is gonna get reflected to the focal point as explained before and of course this has been established to the law of reflection and then we have the second light ray that's passing through the focal point hitting the mirror and then it's getting reflected along the line that's parallel to the optical axis and finally we have the third one this one is kind of unique uh, we can see this uh, light ray it was supposed to pass through the center of the curvature obviously that would not be the case because if uh, we had a light ray passing through the center of the curvature it would be moving away from the mirror however we're going to use that same direction to create the light ray that's moving toward the mirror and that's this uh, light ray that you're seeing here so when we say a light ray is passing to the center of the curvature we really don't mean exactly passing to the center of the curvature but rather being positioned along the line that is passing to the center of the curvature so in again in this case here we have a light ray here that is along the line that's passing to the center of the curvature that's our third light ray and also we established the rule that that light, specific light ray is going to get reflected along the same line so here's the here's the reflection that is uh, this time moving through the center of the curvature and again for these three cases we are looking at the point of intersection you can see that that point of intersection is all the way uh, here in the back and is going to define the position of our mirror image as is uh, shown on this uh, slide we can draw a few conclusions here number one we see that this mirror image is positioned uh, to the left relative to the mirror so we are talking about a real image the image is also inverted meaning it's the opposite side of the optical axis relative to the uh, to the original so original is above the optical axis this one is below so we're talking about an inverted mirror image and finally we can also observe that this mirror image is larger than the original so those would be the conclusions that we can draw uh, from this ray tracing method analysis presented uh, on the left of this slide we can also look at the analytical approach using the mirror formula shown in the box here so the focal length is still equal to plus two in this case here we are taking the distance of the object or original as being plus three which is going to be uh, positioning the original exactly about halfway between the focal point and the center of the curvature and then we can substitute for these two values also please note that both of them are taken with a positive sign because we are dealing with a concave mirror number one and number two the original is to the left relative to the mirror so once we substitute these two values into the mirror formula and do calculations for one over three we get approximately 0.333 and then one half is equal to plus 0.5 we can express one over q from this formula as 0.5 minus 0.333 get the value for one point q as uh, one over q as 0.167 and then take reciprocal value to get the value for the q as uh, plus plus six next step is to do the magnification using the magnification formula for the q we have plus six for the p we have plus three substituted into the formula for the magnification gives us the value of minus two from here if we assume that the height of the original is plus two we can mu multiply the magnification minus two with the height of the original plus two to get minus four as the height of the mirror image created in this case we can draw a few conclusions here the first conclusion is that the mirror image is real why because the q is uh, positive we said that the positive uh, q translates into a real image and then from the magnification we can see that the magnification uh, is negative which means that the uh, mirror image is inverted and then finally the, f the fact that the magnification is larger than one means that the image is larger than the original since the magnification is equal to uh, two means that the mirror image is going to be twice as large as the original we are continuing our analysis of the concave mirror here's the third case the case where the original is positioned 
between the focal point and the vertex of the mirror. So right now the original is very close to the mirror. We still have a real area and the virtual area around the mirror. And again, we are applying a very similar analysis as in the previous two cases where we are going to be looking at three light rays. The first one being the one that runs parallel to the optical axis is going to get reflected through the focal point. That's our first light ray. And then we have the second light ray that is moving along the line that's passing through the focal point. So this line here, as you can see, is the line that's passing through the focal point. We are positioning this light ray towards the mirror. And then we know that this one is going to get reflected along the line that's parallel to the, to the optical axis. And finally, we have the third one that's moving toward the mirror along the line that's passing through the center of the curvature. So we have this extension dotted with, uh, line that uh, is going to establish the direction of the propagation of our third light ray. This light ray that is moving along the line that passes through the center of the curvature is going to get reflected along the same line. So here we have established three reflected light rays shown here in a blue color. What you can observe in this case is that these three reflected light rays are di diverging from each other. In other words, as we are moving away from the mirror, they are farther away from each other. So the point of the intersection obviously is not going to uh, be located to the left relative to the mirror. However, if we extend these three light rays back behind the mirror, we can find a point at which they would these uh, imaginary lines would uh, intersect, which is this point here, and that is going to define the position of our mirror image. There's a few things here that you can observe. This time the mirror image is appearing behind the mirror, so we are talking about the virtual image this time. Uh, the image is also non-inverted, which means that it's positioned on the same side relative to the optical axis, both the original and the image are above the optical axis. And finally, we can also observe that this mirror image is larger than the original. To confirm the results we came up with through the ray tracing method, we can also do the analytical approach. So we are still dealing with the same focal length of plus two. This time the distance of the original to the mirror is less than the focal length, plus one and a half. And we can substitute for these two values. Obviously I selected these two values to position my original at somewhere between the focal point and the mirror. So by substituting these two values and uh, paying attention to the sign, of these two uh, numbers being positive because both the original are to the left and then we're dealing with a concave mirror. So if we substitute and do the proper math, we're going to divide 1 over 1.5 to get 0.667 and then 1 half is equal to 0.5. We extract 1 uh, over Q as 0.5 minus 0.667, do the subtraction and then we reciprocate Q uh, for uh, with a 1 over Q with Q and a get value for the Q as being minus 6. Uh, we can also do the magnification of using the formula on the right hand side. We are assuming that the height of the original is plus 2, substituting for the Q and a P. P is plus 1 and a half, Q is minus 6. Here you have to be very careful with the sign. So we have this negative sign from the formula and then also another negative sign uh, from, the, from the Q. So we would divide 6 over 1.5, you get plus 4. So the total uh, height of the image is going to be magnification times the height of the original. So original height is uh, height of the original is plus 2, magnification is plus 4. If we multiply two, those two numbers, we get plus 8 as the height of the mirror image. There's a few conclusions that we can draw here. The first conclusion is this time, in this third case, the distance of the image to the mirror is negative, uh, has a negative sign, which means that this mirror image is going to be virtual. As it is shown here, it's uh, to the right relative to the mirror. 
And then if you analyze the magnification or the height of the mirror image, you can see that the mirror image has a positive sign, which means that it's going to be positioned along uh, on the same side relative to the optical axis as the original. Since the original is above the axis, the mirror image is also supposed to be above the uh, optical axis, which is uh, converted to the through the sign of the magnification. And finally, the fact that the magnification is larger than one, specifically in this case equal to four, means that the mirror image is going to be larger than the original. Uh, in this case, it is four times larger than the original according to the analytical approach. With this case, uh, we are shifting our attention uh, to the convex mirror. As you can see here, we have a convex mirror. And uh, to the left of this convex mirror is an original position. So we still on the left, relative to the mirror, we have a real portion of the environment. And behind the mirror, we have a virtual uh, environment. And then we are again analyze, analyzing three light rays. The first light ray is running parallel to the optical axis. So this light ray is going to get reflected according to the law of reflection and it is going to be moving along the line that's uh, passing through the focal point. And then we're going to be looking at the second light ray that is moving along the line towards the focal point. Once it hits the mirror, it's going to get reflected along the line parallel to the uh, optical axis. And finally, we have the third case of a light ray that would be moving towards the center of the curvature. Obviously, it is, it is not going to reach that center of the curvature because ultimately it's going to hit the mirror. And this uh, light ray that's moving along the line towards the center of the curvature is going to get reflected along the same line. So that's our third rule. You can see that these three reflected light rays are diverging away from each other. So we have to figure out the point at which they're intersecting since they're diverging away from each other. Obviously, that point of intersection is not going to take place uh, to the left relative to the mirror. However, we have to create these virtual imaginary lines, uh, line extensions that would uh, create the point of uh, intersection uh, where the mirror image in this case is going to be located. We can draw a few conclusions here. Number one. The mirror image is behind the mirror, so we're talking about the virtual mirror image. It is uh, non-inverting, meaning it's uh, on the same side of the optical axis as the original. And finally, it's smaller than the uh, original. As in the previous cases, we can uh, confirm the results of this uh, graphical uh, tracing uh, method using analytical approach. Uh, we are starting with the mirror formula. In this case here, we are taking the focal length as negative because we are dealing with a, complex, with a convex mirror. So in this case, we are taking the focal length as negative. Since we are dealing with a convex mirror, the original is positioned to the left relative to the mirror. So we're going to take it with a positive sign. The distance or P is going to be taken with a positive sign. And then we substitute for, the, for these two values in a, the mirror formula. Uh, we divide 1 over 3 to get plus 0.333. Uh, 1 half is equal to 0.5 with a negative sign. And then from here we extract the 1 over Q and then finally reciprocate to get the value for the Q of minus 1.2. The next step is to do the magnification calculation. So the, we're assuming that the original is having a side, it's having a, a size of plus 2. Here's a magnification formula. We are substituting for Q and P, P being plus 3, Q being minus 1.2. And then that calculation is giving us plus 0.4 as uh, the magnification from which we can also uh, calculate the side, from which we can also calculate the uh, height of the mirror image, plus 0.8. A few conclusions can be drawn here. Number one, Q, ended up being negative, which means that we are dealing with the virtual image, which can be confirmed uh, uh, here with a, gra uh, with a ray tracing method, mirror image to the right relative to the mirror. And then if you look at the magnification, you can see the magnification is positive, which means that the mirror image is going to be non-inverted or on the same side relative to the optical axis as the original. And finally, the fact that the magnification is less than one 
tells us that the mirror image is going to be smaller than the original. In uh, this case, since magnification is equal to 0 0.4, uh, we are basically uh, having the height of the mirror image being 40% of the height of the original. Let's now shift our attention to the image formation using lenses. We are going to start with the converging lens, the case one. We can see here the converging lens. Uh, it's being shown here either in the actual shape or also as an alternative approach. We are using the line with the two uh, arrows at uh, each end that are pointing outwards. Uh, and that's an indication of a converging or a positive lens. As we already elaborated in the previous lecture, a lens has two focal points, one on the left-hand side and one on the, on the right-hand side relative to the lens. And for the case of lenses, the environment around the lens is uh, split into the real portion and virtual portion. In the case of a lens, we have an opposite case, the virtual side is the side left relative to, uh, to, to the left relative to the lens, while the real uh, side of the lens is going to be the side that's uh, on the back of the lens. Here we have the object or original, as we can see it's positioned here farther away from the focal point to the, to the left relative to the focal point. And let's do the ray tracing analysis. We're still analyzing three cases, the first one being a light ray moving along the line parallel to the optical axis, refracting through the focal point over on the other side. So this is a, a fundamental difference between a lens and a mirror. In the case of a lens, we are analyzing light refraction and image, form image formation uh, through the phenomenon of light refraction, while in the case of a mirrors, the images were formed through the law of reflection. So here's our first light ray, and then the second light ray is a light ray that's passing through the focal point on the left-hand side, is going to get refracted or bent along the line that is parallel to the optical axis. And then finally, the third light ray is passing through the center of the lens, and it's going to get refracted along the same line. You can see that the three refracted light rays that are shown here in blue are intersecting at one single point that is going to define the position of the image formed by this lens. We can draw a few conclusions here. Number one, the image formed by the lens is to the right relative to the lens, so we are dealing with a real image. This image is also positioned opposite to the original relative to the uh, optical axis, so we are dealing with an inverted image. And finally, we can also observe that it is smaller than the original. These results can be confirmed through the analytical approach. We are using a lens formula shown in the box. The assumption is that the focal length is equal to plus two. And since the original is moved farther away from the focal length, we are going to assume that the distance from the lens is equal to plus six. And then we are going to substitute into the lens formula we are taking both the focal length and the distance of the original with the positive sign because we are dealing with a positive lens, so that's why the focal length is positive. And then as far as the original, original is positioned on the left-hand side relative to the lens, so we are going to be taking the distance with the positive sign. After substituting into the uh, formula and doing the necessary math, we are coming up with a value for Q of uh, plus uh, 3. And then we can also do the magnification using a magnification formula. We substitute for Q plus 3 and then for P we substitute plus 6. Do the math and then we get uh, minus 0.5 for the magnification. We can draw a few conclusions here. The fact that the Q, the distance uh, of the uh, image relative to the lens is positive, indicates that we are dealing with a real image or the image that's positioned on the right relative to the lens. And then the fact that the magnification is negative means that the image is going to be inverted. And finally, the fact that the magnification is less than one is telling us that the image is smaller, is smaller than the original. Since the magnification is equal to 0.5, the size of the uh, image is 50% of the size of the original. Here's the case two for our positive or converging lens. 
Here we position the original a little closer to the focal point on the left side. And we are again analyzing the three light rays. The first one moving along the line parallel to the optical axis being refracted through the focal point of over on the other side of the lens. The second light ray is passing through the focal point on the left, being refracted along the line parallel to the optical axis. And then and finally the third one being the one that's passing through the center of the lens uh, continues without, without uh, changing its direction. We can identify the point of intersection where our image formed by this lens is going to be positioned. We can draw a few conclusions here. The first one, the image is real because it is positioned to the right relative to the lens. It's inverted because it's on the other side of the optical axis as compared to the original. And finally, it's larger in size than the original. Here is the comparison through the analytical approach. We have for the focal length plus two. This time we are taking for the distance from the original to the lens plus three, we're substituting for the for into the these two values into the lens formula and calculating Q, Q ends up being equal to plus six. Magnification formula is applied here on the right hand side and uh, gives us a result of minus two for the magnification. From here we can draw a few conclusions. Number one, the uh, image formed by the lens is real because it's positioned uh, on the right relative to the lens. And then also through the analytical approach, we can see that the Q is positive, which indicates the real image. Uh, the magnification is negative, which means that the image is inverted. And finally, the magnification is larger than one, which means that the image is larger than the original. The fact that in this, in our case, magnification is equal to two means that the image formed by this lens in this particular case is going to be twice as large as the original. And finally, here's the third case of the image formation through the converging lens. In this case, original is positioned between the focal point on the left and the actual lens. So first light ray, as usual, is the one that's running parallel to the, to the optical axis. It's going to get refracted through the focal point over on the other side. And then we have the second light ray that is moving towards the lens along the line that's passing through the focal point on the left. It's gonna get refracted parallel to the optical axis. So these are kind of unique cases that you have to be very careful about when you're constructing these. So remember the second one is the one that should be moving towards the lens along the line that's passing through the focal point on the left. So we have to create this, uh, this uh, extension to establish the direction of the second light ray. And finally, the third light ray is passing to the center of the lens and uh, it's gonna pass through the lens without changing its direction. So we have created three distinct refracted light rays shown here in blue on the right hand side relative to the lens. We can see that these three light rays are diverging, meaning they are not going to be intersecting on this side of the lens. However, if we construct the extensions back on the left hand side of the lens, we are going to find a distinct point, point at which these three light rays are intersecting that is going to define our uh, image formed by this uh, positive or converging lens. We can uh, draw a few conclusions here. The first one, the, Im the image is virtual beca because it's positioned on the left relative to the lens. It's non-inverted because it's on the same side as the original relative to the optical axis. And finally, it's larger than the original. We can confirm this, uh, these results using analytical approach, starting with the lens formula. In this case, uh, distance of the original from the mirror from the lens is plus one, meaning half the focal length. And then we substitute for the values for the focal length and for the distance of the original, paying attention to the positive sign of the boat because the original is uh, to the left and the lens is positive. And if we do calculation, we get for the distance of the image from the lens as minus two. Since the Q is negative, 
we're dealing with a virtual image formed by this lens and then we can also do the mag magnification if we apply the same formula as before for the magnification we get plus two or if we multiply the magnification by the size of the original we get plus four which is the size of the of the uh, of the image few uh, conclusions again we're dealing with a virtual image created by this lens because the distance q is negative the image is non-inverted because the magnification is positive and then finally the image is larger uh, than uh, the size of the uh, original because magnification is larger than one let's now shift to the diverging lens so we can see here a diverging lens with uh, the distinct way of uh, indicating its diverging lens we have this line here with the two arrows on uh, each side that are pointing inwards and we are positioning the original here between the focal point and uh, the lens creating three distinct light rays first one being parallel to the optical axis that is going to refract along the line that would be passing uh, through uh, the focal point on the left if uh, an extension is created and then the second light ray is moving towards the focal point over on the other side but ultimately it's gonna hit the lens it's gonna get refracted along the line parallel through the optical axis and finally the third light ray is uh, hitting the lens right at the center this light ray is gonna be passed uh, unchanged so we have three refracted light rays that are sh shown here in blue that are diverging over on this side of the lens however if we construct the extensions back to the left we can find a point of intersection that is going to define the position of our image formed by this diverging lens this image is virtual because it's to the left relative to the lens it's non-inverted because it's on the same uh, side of the optical uh, axis as the original and finally it's smaller than the original as it can be observed here's the analytical approach we're dealing with a diverging or negative lens so the focal length this time is uh, to be taken with a negative sign the distance of the original to the lens is plus one and a half and then if we substitute these two values into the lens form formula we get uh, the formula in uh, this uh, shape and taking one over one and a half gives us 0.667 one over two is 0.5 we extract one over q got this value for it and then we uh, reciprocate uh, to get the q and the q ends up being negative 0.857 magnification can be also calculated using the magnification formula as shown here on the right hand side so we come up with a magnification of plus 0.557 and then here are the conclusions first conclusion the q is negative which means that the image is virtual as can be uh, observed on the on a on a diagram on the on the left hand side we said that uh, image is always virtual in the case of lenses if, if, uh, if it uh, appears to the left relative to the lens another thing that we can observe is a positive magnification which means that the image is going to be non-inverted or positioned on the same side of the optical axis as the original and finally the fact that the magnification is smaller than one means that the image is going to be smaller than the original the second case of a diverging lens is when the object is positioned farther away from the focal point on the left again same drill looking at three light rays the first one parallel to the optical axis is supposed to move to the focal point now how would you choose which focal point to use here keep in mind that you're dealing here with a diverging lens so the refracted light ray would have to be diverging so we would have to establish the line that's passing through the focal point on the left which is this refracted light ray and then the second light ray is moving towards the focal point over on the other side however it hits the lens and gets refracted along the line parallel to the optical axis and finally the third light ray is passing through the center of the lens it is gonna get passed with uh, unchanged direction 
three light rays that are diverging, which is a characteristic of a diverging lens. We want to find a point of intersection that's going to again appear on the left relative to the lens after we uh, draw the extensions of the three refracted blue light rays. And that's uh, going to be this point here that is going to define the image formed by this diverging lens. The image is virtual because it's positioned on the left side relative to the lens. It's non-inverted because it's uh, on the same side of the optical axis as the original and also can be observed that it is smaller than the original. And finally, here's the analytical approach. In this case, again, focal length is going to be negative. The distance of the uh, original to the lens is plus 4. We're doing the math here and getting for Q minus 1.33. Uh, and then using the magnification formula uh, to come up with the value of the magnification of being plus 0.33. A few conclusions. We're moving a little faster here because there's a lot of repetition between this case and the previous cases. So number one, the distance of the image is negative, which means that the image is virtual. The magnification is positive, which means that we're dealing with a non-inverted image and finally, the magnification is less than one, which means that the image is going to be smaller than the original. Specifically here, the magnification is 0.33, which means that the size of the image is 33% of the size of the original.